welcome back to Kem's Custom Backgrounds. Uh, this one here, latest build. Um, now this is a Reptile 1. Uh, it's a 1200 long, 600 high, 600 deep. Um, and this one here actually comes with the uh, option of putting this divider in the middle. Now I've taken the doors off, but these are swinging doors. This one here is for uh, my local reptile store. Uh, they um, reached out to me and uh, asked me to do this tank up for one of their own personal enclosures. This one here is gonna have a Simpsons python and a children's python. Uh, they will have different colored backgrounds, different styles of rocks. Uh, I will be doing both of them as removable caves and I will share this center wall to do the caves onto. Um, that's purely just so that we can uh, utilize the same heat mat over both halves of the tank. If you want to go and check out their store, if you live locally or their Facebook page, um, have a search for Ocean Storm Aquariums. Um, they have pretty much all of your reptile supplies um, and they have a very large range of uh, aquariums and all that sort of stuff as well so definitely worth going and seeing Amy down there at Ocean Storm Aquariums and um, yeah shop locally I suppose I like to even though you can get some things cheaper online it's always best to keep your local stores running otherwise you know they won't run any longer so yeah without any further ado we'll get cracking on this one uh, i'm going to start by uh cleaning the i've already gave the glass a quick wipe down and um i've removed the doors and i've removed the lid now that's purely for access so right now i'm going to start laying out some um laid out some spaces and spots and trying to see what I can get these caves to, to work out like. guys there you have it now it doesn't look too crash hot right now but um what i'll do is like i did with the last uh removable cave i will take a knife and cut down off all the glass across the bottom and all that sort of stuff and actually remove that cave and then what i'll do is um flip it over and um carve it out a bit more while it's out um, get a bit of a shape going on it and then I'll place them back in and um, and then foam the rest of the enclosure up around it so next step yeah cut it out and um, cut them out and get them carved up
right guys uh we are all taped up ready for the foam now we'll tape this again properly uh once all the foam's in and carved but this is just so i don't get any expanding foam on any of your black plastics definitely don't want to be marking this tank it is brand new and it doesn't have a mark on it so i'm being extra cautious um but that's it guys i'll yeah, put you on the tripod and start throwing some expanding foam in. Alright guys, there's the children's python one. Lots and lots of foam. I've gone with going with uh, three sides here or two sides I should say, um, just to give these two a complete separate environment blocked off from the one next to it. So not sure how it's going to turn out, but we'll see how it goes. This one here, Stimson's, you can see here, I've started to create more of a stacked stone sort of a look, getting a bit more thickness through all of that. Um, I had a lot of trouble with the foam, um, falling off on this one. I don't know what it was. Could have been the sun coming through the back of it. Glasses, different temperatures, and I don't know. But um, had a lot of drama with that and uh, made quite the mess. But um, it seems to be staying there now, but I have had it fall off overnight before. So fingers crossed it stays up. If not, I'll have to attack it again tomorrow with a bit more foam. Same as this one here. That one there was a pure accident. Uh, it's all fallen down as well, so I really don't want that there um, I'm gonna have to just cut it off after it's dry. Yeah, pretty much the same in that corner too I didn't really want all of that in there, but I should be able to cut it all back out later So not in huge drama And as you can see if I didn't tape up any of that we would have had quite the mess on our hands But there we go Let that expand and start carving finished carving this one is the stimmy one I've gone for more that long straight layered sort of rock look um, as you can see there's a lot of bits of foam and stuff that spewed out and all that sort of stuff that's from um, I went back through and sometimes when you're carving and that you get sections that are a bit too big that you want to fill in or you know, holes that are a bit too big and stuff like that. Or in this case here, I actually found that uh, all the foam in behind this corner was actually hollow. Um, so I've punched a hole in there and, and filled it right up. Um, and then, yeah, I've done the same to this one as well. This one here, children's python. I've gone for more of that more rounded, rounded rock opposed to the layered. Uh, and I also filled up in the corner here. I uh, cut out a bit too much as I was cutting out the um, cutting out those caves, and I did it on this one as well. So, and I also added another after I'd carved it. I added another what will be a rock shelf through there, just to give it a bit more. It was a bit blank through there, so 
Um, yeah, so that's it. I'm going to start knocking these edges off, taking these back to looking good, and then um, clean the glass up on the side there and start taping up and getting ready for first coat. Here we have it <clears throat> all cleaned up, tidied up, um, be ready for coating. This one here is yeah, children's python on the right. Um, not overly happy with the way this cave is at the moment, but I'm thinking once it's all covered at the back here, because I'm going to coat the glass in the same pointing, so you won't see that black line. Um, and once it's got a bit more thickness around it at the moment, it looks a bit chunky, but we are going to put thickness on that wall with the coating, so it shouldn't turn out too bad. Um, and then here's the Simpson one all, all done as well. Right guys, just thought I'd show you quickly uh, how I tape up some stuff. This takes a lot of time. Um, yeah, it's something you want to get right, otherwise you're going to end up having a bad edge and it's not going to turn out too well. So, uh, I haven't really filmed this one before, so just thought I'd see how it goes and we'll go from there. But I'll speed it up in a second and get through it. first coat now this one here I've gone for sand base uh, with a sandstone oxide mixed through it now the consistency you're going for with this first coat is sort of like cake batter you should be able to brush it on uh, you will notice later in the video that I do just turn to using my hands to put it on and the uh, brush just to smooth some stuff out so just depends. I I find it easier sometimes to just use my hand. I get a bit annoyed with the brush, so just have a play around with it and see what works best for you guys. stimmy side this one's sand base um, with the brick red oxide uh, I've gone a bit strong with um, with the brick red in this one see how it turns out but it is only first coat so generally just have a play around with the oxides and see what I want to do with the color and most of the time it changes pretty dramatically as I get through it so um, take this time in your first coats to have a bit of a play with your colours and get a bit of a feel for how the oxides work and how much to use and things like that. So when you do your final coat, um, you've pretty much got it down pat. So yeah, again, it's all about having a play with it, getting your, getting your colours right, and just getting a feel for it really. So use this, like I said, use this first coat as a, as a tester.
How is that for a contrast? There's a stimmy there. There's the children's there. This, I am very happy with the mixture I've used on this. Um, this is just a sandstone oxide. I didn't think it would do much of a difference, but um, it's come out very yellowy orange, which the camera's not picking up on it. Um, but hopefully when I pan back, yeah, you can see it there. It's a lot more yellowy orange than um, than what it was making out before. And then you guys have seen my sort of brick red ones before, but um, it's coming along pretty good. As usual, first coat isn't gonna seal up too well. You are gonna have a lot of little holes, things like that. Second coat, third coat makes a huge difference. There's the cave sitting in there, all coated up. Same thing on this side. You're not gonna have complete coverage, but um, every little layer helps, so there we are. Radio, radio. Here we are, ready to start painting. Um, the last clip that I just showed in the time lapse uh, was coat number three. Here we are for the for the final sort of colours. That's the children's python, uh, and I've got the um, Stimson's python one there. Now it looks a lot more orange than what it is because I've actually got that light there hanging up. It's just, um, I just had it on there earlier today just to help it dry out a little bit. It was a little bit too wet, but I want to paint it tonight, so I chucked that on for the last few hours, and it's done the job nicely, so, um, yeah, I'll set you up, and we'll get some paint on these things.
Here we are with the Stimson one all done and finished. Now, these here are just um, bits of dry, dead grass that I have harvested. Um, and you saw in the video just there, I just poked a hole down through the um, through the wall there and put some insulation tape around it. It's a little trick that I learnt from um, good old Shane Greenman at Greenies Reptiles. So thanks for that, mate. That really, really effective. Really makes that pop. So cool. Uh, I will finish the video up of a close-up of both of these and I'm going to set up and do this one right now. So, yeah. guys another one done and dusted technically two but um yeah it's quite cool seeing this same enclosure with two different um two different scenarios or sceneries sorry um it's pretty cool uh i'm very happy with the way especially the transitions through the middle here um color difference is fairly different environment a little bit different uh, I didn't want to go too crazy with these two, with setting it up with plants and all that sort of stuff. Mainly because these two are both um, adults. And, um, yeah, I just didn't want to take up too much space. Like, they've got the big, nice hide there that they can get in. And this one here, the hide's a little bit smaller, so I've gone and added this uh, half sort of hollow log here. Um, which ties into the scenery pretty cool anyway. Um yeah these plants that i've got laying around here now you pick up this sort of stuff from target and places like that it's all just foam internal they just pull out um you can bend the bottoms of them you know to be 90 degrees and you can stick them into the backgrounds and all that sort of stuff so um Keep your eye out for these sort of things. Sometimes they pop up on special fairly cheap. I mean, this thing's got like, I think I counted originally 13 of these little plants in it. And I think it cost me 10 or 15 bucks. So de definitely worth it. And then um, every time I go out anywhere near the bush or anything like that, I always find this sort of stuff laying around or branches and things like that. I find leaving it in the sunshine, making sure it's got no ants through it and all that sort of stuff when you pick it up. Don't find completely saturated sort of timbers and branches and things like that because that sort of stuff then houses molds and all that sort of nasty stuff. So try and find dry branches, try and find insect-free branches. Um, if you've got a pool or something of larger scale that you can drown the branches and all that sort of stuff in by all means go for it the stuff that i've got in here it has been kicking around in my shed here for oh months months and months and months trying to find different projects that it goes into so that's on top of leaving it out in the sunshine for a couple of weeks on end and then bringing it inside where it can't get any moisture whatsoever so these are very dry very clean gonna have no dramas doing this um substrate i've used again is just yuki mulch um i like it gives a good texture i would have gone sand in this one but um amy the owner uh stimmy or both of them actually don't go too well on sand so that's fair call and we yeah just asked if we could deck it out with um just yuki mulch still comes up all right Definitely looks like a um, little piece of nature in both of them. So thanks again for sticking through this one. And I hope you uh, learnt something and 
can have a crack at your own stuff. Now, if you are building your own things, feel free to um, send me some photos and, you know, don't be afraid to ask some questions along the way. Like, I had, I only started building these through questions I was asking everyone else, um, trial and different things. And, um, yeah, just have a crack at it. Don't be shy, you know, to be honest, this one here, um, my airbrush wasn't working properly. The paints weren't going on like I wanted it to and things like that. So even though I build these things one after another and I just continuously do them, I still come across problems you see with the foam and all that sort of stuff. So don't be, don't be scared that when you've gone and done something that you're going to do it wrong or it is wrong just it's not the end of the world let it dry coat it again if you have to if the paint's not what you want or if the foam's fallen off just let it dry cut it all out and start again you can have a play around with it you can have a crack um but yeah if you do want to if you are having a go at some stuff feel free to shoot me through some photos um i love seeing everyone else's what they're doing um gives me ideas on what i want to do you'll find me on facebook at uh, cam's custom backgrounds um you can shoot the page a message as well asking some questions or shoot some photos through if you want to um yeah it'd be great if you just hit that subscribe button currently as i'm doing this now i think i'm at 245 so we're sort of, by the time the video comes out, we're averaging averaging a growth of about 100 subs per video. So it's it's going pretty good so far. And yeah, if you guys like what you're seeing and you just want to see more, hit that subscribe button because I've got plenty more coming. Now thanks for watching and um, I'll catch you on the next build.